Driving race cars was the most important thing to me. That's all I care about in life. That's all I want to do. You always have to be evolving of what you're going to do and how you're going to play it. Baby, that was awesome! Joseph Newgarden is an IndyCar race winner! Joining Team Penske was the biggest challenge put in front of me. Watch that line. Oh. The championship leader is in huge trouble! Joseph Newgarden is going to win for the fourth time yeah. in 2017! Take it to victory lane! Oh, he's stuffing it in! Oh. Racing hard is something that I don't regret doing. I love driving Indy Park. Joseph Newgarden is the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series champion. Oh, wow. Whoa, this is elaborate. Check this out. This is pretty cool. How long did you guys take building this? It's super cool. Wow, look at that one. That's awesome. Well, I haven't even seen all these. These are neat. It's pretty cool, man. You're reminded of all, all the moments, all the good, the bad, the highlights of, of what made the year what it was. And there's, there's a lot that goes into that. You know, there's a lot that goes in with your teammates, with your competitors, everyone from the, the, the crew to uh, the engineers, the, the owners, uh, the fans. I mean, you, you really think about everything. So uh, it, was, it was fun seeing all these photos. It's, it's something you don't get every day is, is this type of look back into a year. Growing up, um, I, I, was, I was always interested in cars. I was always interested in something that had an engine, that had wheels, that you, know, you, could, you could either ride or drive or, or push the limits. You know, I mean, I remember wanting you know, a bicycle from, from a very young age. I wanted a go-kart since, you know, since I can remember. I think since I was three years old, I wanted a go-kart in some fashion. I got involved in sort of the normal sports that you know, suburban kids in America grow up in. Baseball was really my main sport. I probably spent 12, 13 years playing it. You know, I think my dad, selfishly, he would have loved for me to be, you know, a professional baseball player one day. But he never pushed that on me. He, you know, he allowed me to explore it, see if I liked it, see if I loved it, see if it's something I wanted to do. Really started to understand once I became a teenager that, you know, racing is something that I'm very interested in. That's, that's something I, I think I, I would love to do. My dad is really the one person that allowed it to happen. When I was growing up watching, watching race cars, it, it was really the cars that, that drew me in. I think for me, I never even thought about becoming a prof professional race car driver. To me, it was a matter of the way they look, the way they sound, um, you know, the, the spectacle of the events. To, to me, that's what drew me in. Really, if you want to become an Indy car driver one day, driving go-karts is, is the segue to that. That's really the, the form of racing you need to enter into. And in Nashville, there's, there's not a lot of tracks around. Really, the closest racetrack to Nashville, Tennessee is Newcastle Motorsports Park, which is just outside of Indianapolis. So we had to drive 300 miles up to Indianapolis, 300 miles back home, so that's 600 miles round trip just to go race in a go-kart on a weekend. When I was 13 years old, that was the first time I got to go to Newcastle. It's the first time I really got to sit in a go-kart, a real go-kart, one with a fast engine, you know, the one that you know, went 50, 60 miles per hour. It was the real deal on a, on a one-mile track. You're not talking about something that you just find at a fair. I mean, this was a real racetrack. It was real sanctioned leagues. There was real competitive racers there. And I remember getting on the track the first time and being completely overwhelmed by what was happening. You know, it was like I couldn't keep up with the information. People were flying by me. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like completely out of my element. But I knew I liked it. I was a little bit scared of it. But I almost think that's what made me like it. And it was something that, you know, something that infects you. It just, it sucks you in. As soon as you get a little bit of a taste of it, the sport of racing can, can really draw you in fast. You know, the moment for me that I felt like 
something could, could come of this was, was really after I got through my first race weekend in Skip Barber. I think I hit the wall at Sebring in turn 17 um, in my first race and just wrecked the car, pancaked it straight into the wall. And I really doubted, you know, if I was capable of doing this. It kind of, it made me sit back and think about it. And I remember going out the next day and winning the, the next race immediately afterwards. And from that moment, I thought, you know what? I can figure this out. I know that I can do this. For me growing up, I, racing was my priority. I, it was my love, it's, it's what I put everything into. Um, you know, I didn't have a ton of friends growing up. Going and racing go-karts on the weekend, going to race you know, junior formula cars on the weekend, that's where my mind was at all the time. It really gave me a good foundation of something to focus on and work towards. You know, I think a lot of people, they, they generally can find go-karting, they can understand that world, they can get through that phase of racing. But once you want to trans transfer into cars and you really want to figure out how to make this a professional career, that's a difficult point. I was 17 years old when I got selected for the Team USA scholarship, and so I got to go over and run the Formula Ford Festival, the Walter Hayes Trophy, which were two of the biggest Formula Ford races in England. A huge opportunity for, for a young driver to go get experience in a world that they're not familiar with, you know, to really put themselves in, a, in an uncomfortable situation to hopefully, you know, learn and grow for the future. Newgarden dives up the inside, going into clearways. Great move. Joseph Newgarden goes through. That gives him the lead. It was difficult to do. You know, I mean, once I started racing in Europe and I went over into that path, you know, what do you do with high school? You got to do something different. I had to, I had to finish it online. Fast forward to 2010, and I, I had a late opportunity to, to run GP3, which more, was more of a European championship. Um, it ran with Formula One. It was one of the feeder series to Formula One. And that year just didn't go well. You know, it was, it was kind of bad timing. Everything just didn't line up. It was one of those years where, you know, you're probably the wrong place, wrong time. I remember being at the end of that year thinking, you know, I might be out of racing here. We've got no money, we've got no support, we've got no opportunities to run in Europe. You know, even if I come back to America, I don't even know what opportunities I have there. And, and that was kind of a, a turning point. That was, you know, you're either gonna not have racing anymore, it's gonna go away from you, or something's gonna materialize at the end of the day. Welcome to beautiful sunny St. Petersburg, Florida, and it is finally time to go racing. Coming back to America was the perfect timing. You know, it was the perfect opportunity. I had a great drive offer from, from Sam Schmidt to run in his Indy Lights program, which is the feeder to IndyCar. You know, it's a, it's a great opportunity to potentially catapult you into the professional league and, and one day run the Indianapolis 500. In Hendersonville, Tennessee's Joseph Newgarden will take Sam Schmidt Motorsports into victory lane to start the 2011 Firestone Indy Light season. What a way to start the year. It's gonna be a long season, but this is absolutely the right way to start it off. To win the first race out, you know, in a championship I didn't know, was, was just really gratifying. It kind of just gave me that hope again that, look, I know what I'm doing, it's confirmation on, I can do this, I know I can put the work in and, and deliver the results. The winner of the 2011 Firestone Freedom 100 is Joseph Newgarden. We could be looking at a star in the making. Twin checkers out, Joseph Newgarden is the winner here on the streets of Edmonton. He did awesome out there. He's just so devoted. I mean, he lives, breathes, eats, racing. That's all he thinks about. He has been so strong this season. It's a pretty good indication, though, of how good this kid is going to be. Joseph Newgarden has clinched the 2011 Firestone Indy Lights Championship. I remember 2011, I just enjoyed the sport. I enjoyed the process of going to the race weekend working with engineers, making fast cars, making good decisions, and, and just trying to win races. 2012 was just a shot out of a cannon. Newgarden looks to the outside. Oh, oh my! Just like that, his day is done. Oh, oh. contact! Ryan Briscoe and Joseph Newgarden. Oh. Hard contact with the outside wall. Joseph Newgarden's day is done. It ended up being a very tough year. It was a tough year to integrate, but 
the most important part about it was the opportunity it presented, the, the ability to be on the stage and just be on the ground floor. That's, that's almost the hardest part is just getting that entry. Getting to work with, with Sarah Fisher was great. You know, she, she understands the difficulty that the sport produces. You know, she, she understands the challenges that you will face as a, as a young driver. She knows what a grind it is to try and continue and, and just to stay in the sport. It's hard enough to get in, but to stay in it, she knows how difficult that is. When we had the merger with, with, with Ed Carpenter Racing and it became CFH Racing, it created a whole different dynamic. When we were just one small group with SFHR, there was only so much you could really do. But you take two smaller groups, you put them together and make them sort of a medium-sized group. Well, now all of a sudden, the, the potential's a little bit higher. Newgarden is making that corner his own. If you're gonna win today, it's gonna be on the back of a move like that. That was just exceptional racecraft from Joseph. The wait is over. Joseph Newgarden is an IndyCar race winner at Barber Motorsports Park. Congratulations, buddy. First win here, nice job, great job. Whoa, baby, that was awesome. Forever to get. We were able to win our first race, we were able to win a second race, and you know, we finished on the podium a couple different times as well. We, we really just put everything together, and I became very, very close with Ed over the years, and you know, he really, I think, helped take me to the next level after that. It was kind of the, the 2.0 version in IndyCar racing, and um, you know, just being able to spend all the time that I did with him, uh, I think it did wonders for, for my growth and, and continuing that, that learning arc that we were on. Crash on the front straight away. You okay, bud? Bud, you okay? He's moving. I think that that moment in 2016 where, where I had the accident and I had that recovery process of you know, how am I gonna get back in the race car? How am I gonna convince everyone that I can still drive and you don't need to put me out, you don't need to hire someone else? I remember that presenting a great challenge for me to, to find more. I had to dig deeper. Driving with a broken right collarbone and a broken right hand, this has been more than a gutsy performance. When the accident happened, we were talking about when will he be back? Will it be before the end of the season, not in a week? Joseph Newgarden has put on a driving clinic here at Iowa. He's lapped these guys over and over and over. That kid is unbelievable. Joseph Newgarden wins in Iowa. Oh, baby, that was good. It was an opportunity to show my toughness in a way. You know, I think it, it really, at the end of the day, probably helped me get a drive with Team Penske. You know, people saw that I was serious about the sport, that, you know, driving race cars was the most important thing to me. That's, that's all I care about in life. That's, that's all I want to do. And I'll do anything to be successful at it. To me, that provided the gateway for, for everyone to see that. You know, and if there was any question of it before, I think it completely eradicated that. I remember at the end of 2016, as it's starting to wind down that season, there was this beautiful mix of opportunity and uh, difficulty in front of me. What are you going to do as far as decision making? You know, how are you going to approach that? You know, what's going to be, you know, what's going to be your guiding light? It's been a big weekend here for the career of Joseph Newgarden as he'll make his debut for Roger Penske. The American earned this ride, and I'm sure he will deliver. I remember talking with Ed. You know, we went to lunch um, before I made the decision to sign with another group, and it was, uh, it was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. I was torn at wanting to stay with Ed and stay with ECR. You know, we had built something to me that was very successful, you know, very capable of being in championship contention year after year. So you're leaving something that's existing, that's, that's known, that's working. Having to tell Ed that and, and uh, have that conversation with a, with a friend at the end of the day. You know, he's my team owner, he's my boss, but he's also my friend. It, it was very tough. Joining Team Penske was definitely, it was the biggest challenge put in front of me. You know, it's, the, it's definitely the biggest expectation. To me, I, I wanted to continue the growth and I, I wanted to figure out the best way to do that. And for me, going and finding a completely new situation that I hadn't been in um, at all in my career was the best thing for that. That was gonna give me the best opportunity to, to continue learning, to continue bettering my craft and, and hopefully making me a better race car driver. 
the Penske team has done it once again. Roger Penske begins to celebrate. You're looking at historically the most successful team in, in IndyCar racing. There's nowhere to hide. You know, you, you have many teammates. It's not just one teammate you have. You've got three teammates. So how are you going to fare in that situation? What are you going to show? What, what are you really capable of is, I think, what the questions were going to be for me going into the group. At the end of the day, the sort of team mantra that they operate off of is, is perfect for me. You know, it's, it's really the way I want to operate. The cool thing about getting teamed up with, with Elio, with Simon, with Will, is that they were, they were so open and accepting to me immediately. You know, they, I think for them it was important that I got integrated quickly so that I could start contributing. That's really what makes us so strong, in my opinion, at Team Penske, is, is that collaboration between us. The only difficult part about it is how do you toe the line between team player and competitor? Because at the end of the day, we still want to beat each other. But it's interesting because it, you know, it seems like all those guys, they, they understand it. They understand that, look, we're a team, we're working together, but when we get on the racetrack and it comes race day, we're gonna race each other. We're gonna race each other hard, we're gonna try and beat each other, and that's really how it needs to be. I remember the first time I walked into the shop with Team Penske and, and uh, Tim Sindrick had, had walked me in and introduced me to the group. And uh, it, it, was maybe, it was maybe a quarter of the people that work at the shop at Team Penske. You know, they have over 400 people working there. There was probably 100 in the room. And it, it felt like there was 1,000 people in the room. I remember being completely overwhelmed with, with what their organization was. I didn't have any specific concerns before the season. I think for, for me, it was a matter of, you know, how quickly are you gonna be able to learn the race weekend process together? You know, that, that's really what we couldn't replicate in the off season. I think my thought process going into the year was, you know, we can absolutely challenge for the championship. We can challenge for wins. I, I think right from the, the beginning of the season, I was thinking about, you know, positioning ourselves for the championship. I didn't know that it'd be possible to win a championship in the first year. I didn't know that we win, we'd necessarily win races. But for me, just thinking that we have to be in position, making sure that you convince yourself that it, it, it can be possible and that you must be thinking about it right from the beginning, that's what I wanted to make sure I did. So if there was ever gonna be any hope or any chance of it, I wanted to make sure we were prepared right from the very first race of the season. The 172-day wait is over. The Verizon IndyCar Series is set to embark on a new season here on the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida. We had started the season. We had a really good run at St. Pete for the most part. We started with a top 10. Yeah, it wasn't great, but it was a good, solid race. Then we go on to Long Beach, and we, and we still don't win, but now we got a podium. And so if you look at that progression, you go, okay, well, now we're going to Barber. This is a place I've won at. This is the place I won my first race. All odds say that you, you probably should take the step up just a little bit more. And so for me, it kind of all lined up. It was just the perfect storm. This could get Newgarden on the run for the championship. First win in Penske colors for Joseph Newgarden. He's done it again in Barber. Man, that was fun. Good job, bud. Good job. Great job, guys. We got the first one together. Thank you. Yeah, boys. Awesome work. Did you earn that one? You know, I think if I, if I analyzed the season as far as performance, where we were good, where we were bad, it, you know, there wasn't a ton of weak spots. For me, the, the one area where we probably came up a little short was, was our oval game. I think there's more gaps and there's more learning to be had going into season two on the ovals than, than rotor street courses. If we have to give up a win to guarantee a fifth, you know, the other or thing just, is yeah, our podium. Right, because we're, we're, we're racing the three, the nine, mm -hmm. the one. A lot of what made that work was my relationship with Brian Campy, my engineer. We really hit the ground running. Um, you know, he's super successful, super talented, very, very good to work with. We took our hits when we needed them, and we tried to just apply the knowledge from those and, and sort of the learning experience to, to make everything better in the later run. The summer stretch of IndyCar continues in America's heartland. Make sure you got everything where you want it for the start. Green, green, green. And it's green, green, green. from Mid Ohio. Power gets the early jump. Oh, oh Newgarden! A battle for the lead. Joseph Newgarden is going to get around his teammate. Newgarden gets by Will Power to take the lead in Mid Ohio. Clear, clear. Nice job. This could be the best pass I've ever seen in Mid Ohio. Sets him up high, goes low on Will Power, just slices it in there, ninja style to take the lead. He's gone. Look wow. At that. In a half a lap, he is just taking off. Cap is 4.2. 4.2 to Will. He has absolutely schooled the field. Just untouchable. 
He will take the championship lead for the first time. Joseph Newgarden dominates in mid-Ohio. Awesome drive. It's all you today. Man, I love driving Indy Park. Whoa! Yeah! yeah! Take it to victory lane. I think for our season, the, the big statement, the big turning point in our year was really mid-Ohio. You know, that, that was the place where Everything was lined up. You know, we, we were strong in practice, we qualified well, and we executed on the race. And I think we really showed everyone we can put a weekend together that's, that's strong and gonna be difficult to top. Oh, with the pass with Will, that was really, um, for me, it was the perfect opportunity in that race to, to make it happen. You know, there was a couple ways you were gonna get by him. You were gonna get by him on strategy, you know, being better in and out of the pits with pit stop sequence, or you just had to pass him in a corner. You know, and, and passing in the corner is always more fun. I, I sort of had a sense that we were quicker in that race. If, if we could get by Will, I knew we could kind of run away with the thing. I studied him. I studied him for a couple laps, and you know, the, the move in itself was was really made happen by Will, in my opinion. You know, you can only make a pass successfully if the guy will will tango with you. Once we got the points lead, it wasn't necessarily a nervous point in, in the in the season, in my opinion. You know, that was just. That was more relief, like, okay, we're in the fight, we're in a good position, now we're leading the charge, let's keep going. After 14 years, IndyCar is back in St. Louis, a near perfect setting for the final oval race of this IndyCar season. Championship points in play. Many of the contenders up front. It's gonna be all about this restart, buddy. You got it. Green, green. Good hard racing between the Penske drivers and Pagano stays in front. When are the gloves gonna come off? It's happening tonight. This is fight night. He's gotta run. Pagano will try to defend on the low. Whoa! Run. Half car low, looking inside. The two Penske drivers touch, and Joseph Newgarden goes back to the front to the inside of Simon Pagano. That's unbelievable. He hit me. Nice job. Keep pushing, keep pushing. What a swing potentially in the championship. Joseph Newgarden is going to win for the fourth time in 2017. The next American superstar takes control of the championship. Yes, yes, yes! Good job, boys! Awesome, man. Awesome drive. Those are win. The gateway pass to me was, was a certain approach. It was a reading of the situation, and, and for me, it was the right time to make that type of move. You know, it, you, you calculate in all these races of you know, what you should do, what you shouldn't, how you should approach it. And I, I think with Gateway, that was the right approach. I knew I was racing a high caliber driver. I knew he was a teammate. I knew it was Simon. And, and he, would, he would, in a way, make it work um, because he's, he's good enough to make it work. I, I knew that he could make it work. And so I, I made the decision and I made the pass. And, and for me, I, I think it worked and I think it fit in that moment. I was never intending to make a statement, but for me, it was a gratifying win. Whenever you're able to make uh, a move like that and win a race off of it, I, I think it just, it amps you up a little bit more than a race where you led the whole thing. You know, you still love both wins, but uh, the way you win a race certainly makes it feel differently. Joseph said that he felt like there was room, that there was somewhat of a door open. Your opinion? There was room with me. Anybody else, he would be in the fence right now. The situation with Simon, you know, everyone loves drama. Everyone wants to create drama out of it. And, you know, there wasn't much of it. We work well together. You know, we're, we're, we're in a team where the environment is about working well together. And I know that, and Simon knows it very well. So, you know, there was, there was real no negative impact from it. We were able to move on pretty quickly to the next race, you know, keep doing what we've been doing. And, and that's building fast race cars, being better than the competition, and, and putting Team Penske first. I don't look back at Gateway and, and regret much about it. I think you know the, the style of racing teammates hard is, is something that I'll continue to do. For any of my teammates, I, you know, I always want to give them the respect that they, they need and that they deserve, but at, at the same time, you want to race them aggressively, you want to race them hard because 
at the end of the day, they're my competition. You know, I'm racing my teammates for the championship. It's, it, it makes it tough to not race them hard because when it comes down to the points battle, those are the guys that I'm going to be going up against. You have to look after the situation. I think you have to try and nurture it to make sure it doesn't, you know, turn into something negative. But racing hard is, is something that I don't regret doing. I think that's it's, it's necessary in this championship. Watkins Glen International. It's been chilly all weekend. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. We've had heavy rain. Weather is a factor. It's time to bring the action. Three wide, Newgarden locks up. Here comes Rossi. The pole man retakes the lead. I thought Newgarden made a brilliant move. He just couldn't hang on to the exit. Look at Ray Hall just motoring by. No problem on Newgarden. Too much drag. They're regretting the gamble to expect rain on the track. Joseph Newgarden, the championship leader in the orange and white car. He's going to have to get around. Will Power coming out. Final stop for the two Team Penske cars, and it's a drag race to the line. Watch that line. Watch that line. Oh. Oh, he gets hit hard by Sebastian Bourdais. The championship leader is in huge trouble. Just understeered into the grass, hit the wall, and then the next car came along and hit him. Listen to me, Vance. Listen to me. We're going to change all the tires here, OK? And change the rear wing, and then we'll decide if we go or not. Can you believe what we've just seen? This is monstrous. The driver who has won three of the last four races, it all escaped him, exiting pit lane. And he limps home and loses 28 points of advantage. I check her flag here, bud. And the good news is we're leading this championship by three, so we still control our own destiny. Watkins Glen was, was really a difficult weekend for us in that it had so many variables built in that it was different than a lot of the year and the way that it had all flowed. There wasn't many rain races this year. There wasn't many things that were popping up that we weren't prepared for, that we had to guess at. You know, Watkins was, was really a true guess. I remember us going into that race and, and taking a gamble, and, and certainly from my side, I, I took more gambles probably there than I needed to looking back. Um, you know, I just, I felt like, this championship was gonna come down to Sonoma regardless. And you know, the way that I drove that race was, you know, get more than less. And now looking back on that with, with everything that happened, all the rain, all the decisions, uh, you know, from myself, from, from the team, you know, probably I would have approached it a little bit differently. Once we came out of Watkins Glen and we were kind of all set up, ready for that final race in Sonoma, the points had changed quite a bit. You know, we had we had a huge lead before, in, in some people's opinion, and now it was down to nearly nothing. You know, you know, you got Scott Dixon, who's only three points back. You have the other guys who are very, very close. Um, a lot of people were in striking distance, and so the way I had viewed it originally was that it was going to come down to Sonoma. It's double points. You have to win that race. You got to have a perfect weekend there. And that's really what the setup was. It was essentially that, you know, all of us, uh, including me, we were going to have to have a perfect weekend. We're going to have to win the race. We can't have any missteps. And so that, that was my thought process all along going into the final race. And I guess I got my wish at the end of the day because I made it even harder with the Watkins Glen incident. But it, it was sure going to make that day at, at Sonoma even more important. I'm not sure if it was the aftermath of, of Watkins Glen, but with the mistake, maybe maybe that played into it. I, I just could not sleep before getting to Sonoma. I kept thinking about different scenarios of the race. I was racing different people every night in my, in my dreams. I was racing at different tracks. It wasn't always at Sonoma. And I, I hadn't dreamed like that in a long, long time. It was just something that kept waking me up. And it was just all these intense battles in my mind. And I don't know what that was. Maybe I was building it up in my head that I'm going to have this intense battle at Sonoma. But it just kept me from, you know, it kept me from sleeping at night and staying focused on trying to be ready for the race. It was just like I had anxiety about it. I tried to keep it bottled up and, and just focus on Sonoma as a normal weekend where we got we to gotta proceed as, as we have all year. It's qualifying for round 17, the season finale, the championship decider. Newgarden up two tenths to his teammates on used red. Joseph one. Newgarden goes to the top. It's a great hat, Dave. Good job. Yes. Great. Good job, boys. Good job. 
for me, the, the, the pole run, qualifying at Sonoma, that was the critical component to us specifically on the two car dictating the weekend. You know, it, to me, it's what won us the championship. We were able to dictate what was going to happen. You know, we kind of earned that right by qualifying first. Joseph Newgarden sends a message. Boys, this is my title right now. You're going to have to come and get me. You know, I will say, getting the pole did help a bit. It, it helped me, you know, feel better about accomplishing one of the goals for the weekend. It doesn't take away the pressure of the race itself. You know you still have to win the race. You know the championship is, is still decided that weekend. But I think just getting one of those small goals, those small victories for the weekend, it, it really helps set you at ease. It is the 17th and final round of the Verizon IndyCar Series. Who is going to win the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series Championship? 85 laps, just over 200 miles. It's not that often that you have this many drivers in contention for a championship. Start your engines. Green, green, green. It's time to bring the action. Up to turn two, there's trouble. New Garden to the front, nice clean start. Contact nose to tail in the back. It's going to plan so far for Joseph New Garden. Fastest car on the track, back level 10. Plus 2.6 to wheel. Got no pressure. Simon Pagino comes to pit lane. This is a bit of a surprise for him to come in lap 12. I can only imagine maybe they're considering a four stopper. Roger Penske, four horses in this race, and he's going to spread the odds. Give yourself an ability to win on two different strategies. They're going with four stops all the way and telling Simon, let's go for it. All right, you're the leader right now. You're the leader. You're working on fuel. Don't worry about Simon. You're doing fine. You catch it, Joseph. Once he stops, we'll go a few laps and then we're pit right after him. Final stop for Joseph Newgarden. Reset your fuel, put sticker reds on, sticker reds. All clear. Simon Pagano. Hit on this lap, three, two, one. He's going to put on blacks. He hadn't changed the car one time. He said it's perfect. All clear, all clear. Joseph, start to finish right now. Simon Pagano will stay ahead of Joseph Newgarden. Be smart, be smart. Newgarden's got to make the move. Oh. Top two in the championship oh, at the moment. He's going to go high and cross under Pagano. Watch this. Got him. No, he yes. spun the tires. He spun the tires. Be smart there, bud. Not racing him for the championship right now. You're going to need those tires. Good laps here. Hard as you can. Simon Pagano wins in Sonoma. Joseph Newgarden is the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series champion. Awesome job, guys. Great job, team. Awesome work. Awesome job. Thank you, guys. In a way, you know, losing the race was so difficult, but winning the championship was completely worth it. You know, it, it, it felt good crossing the line. It, it felt good getting those final laps under your belt, making sure that you finish it off right, crossing the line, knowing that it's over, that we did our job. We did exactly what we needed to do today, and we, we basically, we achieved our goal. The championship was important. It was the most important thing of the weekend. But, but winning a race is always important too. If you have an opportunity, you have a chance, you're gonna go for it. At least that's my style as a racer. I'm gonna go for it when I have a chance, when I have an opportunity, when I feel like I have the car to make it happen. Um, you wanna go for it, you wanna get the win. Anything less than that, it's not the win. You know, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Winning the race is what matters. But quickly in that moment, you know, I had, I had Tim on the stand coaching me through it, telling me, Look, you know, this, this is the score. Here's what the game is. This is what you need to focus on, and this is what we need from you. Working the fuel there, bud. You're doing good. Keep working the fuel. 15 to go. Doing fine here. Just keep doing what you're doing. Take care of the tires and get us a 70. And I think that really helped me focus in on, on the championship side of things and, and realizing that, you know, a championship's not built over one race. It's built over a season. And if you ruin it in this race, you can't get that back. You'll have to wait till next year to do it again. Not everyone's been able to do that. You, you have opportunities in front of you. A lot, of, a lot of drivers have had opportunities to win championships, and they, they've not materialized. So I was really, really proud of our whole team and the way it all worked out. We won the race, we finished one, two, three, and we win, a, we win the championship. Where's, my, where's Dad at? There he is. <laughs> It's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long night. Look at Sarah. Yeah, you should come up. Look. Kathy just told me it can't be.
<laughs> Thank you, Rose. Good job, Cuz. Thank you, Rose. Yeah, awesome. you. Fantastic to be here, man. Dude, you're an amazing very, teammate. Very, very, you really are. Very. The young American from Tennessee, Joseph Newgarden. Yeah. I don't know if this is too much. I'm so happy this is over with. I haven't slept. Hey, <laughs> hug me, brother. <laughs> uh, good job, buddy. Good job, man. It's good stuff. Hey, we're here in Championship Circle. Guys, what did we just do? What did we do? Did we win the championship? It was all year long. Here's the trophy. It's an awesome day. We got the win here. Well, we didn't get the win, actually, but we won the championship. <laughs> I almost lied about it. We didn't win the race, but we won the championship. Oh, we're doing all these hats? Together? How do you do this? You gotta roll it, roll it. Oh, you roll it. I'm sorry, they're bad about this, Roger. Yeah, Roger! Roger's yeah. got it! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> part about crossing the finish line at Sonoma, you know, knowing that we, we got the championship, we, we did what we needed, we finished second, it was, uh, it was the perfect position for us just to seal off the championship. It didn't hit me in that moment. That was not when I felt it. You know, it wasn't until I got out of the car, I got interviewed, I saw all the people around, you see the crew, you get to hug everybody, you see the excitement for it. That's when it hits you that it's over, we achieved it, we did what we needed to. You start thinking about everything it takes, all the effort, all the people that, that helped you or put a hand out or, or put you in this position to be here today. You know, that's when it hits you that. It's, it's a big moment that you just went through and you were able to, able to finish off. Where are they? Where's, where's my... Uh... Well, my family's right here. Oh, so. oh bye. Hey, Joey, come here. Come here. Where's Dad it's tough to look at everyone. It's tough to look at the team that you've been with all year, you know, working for this championship. It's, it's tough to look at your mom. It's tough to look at your girlfriend, your sister. Um, but, you know, for me, I think, you know, seeing, seeing my dad and seeing his, his satisfaction, just his, his joy of that moment meant a lot to me. Because, I, you know, I have sacrificed a lot for this sport. I've put a lot into it. But I also know how much my dad's put into it. He's, he's really invested a lot of time and, and energy and, and love for it. You know, love for me, for, for, for me to try and make it happen. And so to, to see that on his face and just his enjoyment of it, it, it kind of, it choked me up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, it, it, it you know, it really, it really hit home with me, everything that, that had gone into it and um, how much effort it took. Dude, here, here, right here, why? Here, we got a card for you. Read it now. Read it right now. I wrote it. You wrote it for me right now. Yes, I did, man. Here, My dad had actually written a card. He'd, he'd given me a card. He'd, he'd, he'd written it out for me already and gave it to me in, in that kind of championship circle and, and, and wanted me to read it. You know, it was real quick. It was real sweet. And it, you know, he's always told me to just be Joseph. That's, that's what he tells me for advice. And he wrote that on the card. And, you know, I think for him that, that meant a lot in that moment to, to, to be able to give that to me and, um, you know, certainly for me to receive it meant a lot as well. I'm tired, man. <laughs> I haven't slept. I'm tired, I'm gonna be honest. Whenever I finish a race, I'm, I'm kind of spent. I'm ready to go home. I always just think of it as the job's done. We are done. We can go home now. We finished our job. There's so much more that comes after that. You know, there's, there's the celebration. There's, you know, especially with the championship, you have to think about that, that role that you have now as the champion and, and how you're going to spread the message and, and show everybody what this year was all about. Thank you so much to the IndyCar fans. We have some of the best in the world. For me, that's not always the easiest thing. It's, it's tough to do, but you know, it's, it's a job that's, that's required. And you know, it's a job that you know, I'll, I'll certainly take on um, every day.
The 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series saw some of the most competitive racing in the sports history. Joseph Newgarden is going to win for the fourth time in 2017. With victories at Barber Motorsports Park, the streets of Toronto, the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, and Gateway Motorsports Park, Joseph Newgarden wins the Sunoco Diamond Performance Award for the most victories in 2017. Joseph Newgarden is the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series champion. The champion's ring presented by Jostens goes to Joseph Newgarden, the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series champion. Carlos Munoz wins the Tag Heuer Don't Crack Under Pressure Award. The AJ Ford Enterprises driver advanced 73 positions over the 2017 season and finished 16th in the point standings. The Verizon P1 Season Award goes to Will Power. In 2017, Power started on the pole in six races, finished in the top 10 11 times, and earned a total of 173 P1 Award points. Must be impressed with the job that Ed Jones has done fighting these veterans. Side by side, that's so difficult. Dale Coyne Racing's Ed Jones wins the Sunoco Rookie of the Year Award, finishing 14th in the overall IndyCar point standings. And for the sixth consecutive season, Chevrolet wins the IndyCar Manufacturer Award. Chevrolet won a total of 10 races and 12 poles this season. Mark Miles, Chief Executive Officer of Holman & Company, presented the Manufacturer Award to Chevrolet's Jim Campbell following the season-ending race in Sonoma. Simon, congratulations on that win. Joseph on the championship, amazing. And to Team Penske, Ed Carpenter Racing, AJ Foyt Racing, thank you and all of our technical partners for putting the valuable points on the board to win this championship for a sixth time. Congratulations to all of the Verizon IndyCar Series Award winners in 2017. When I get to look at the championship trophy, the Astor Cup, you know, to, to me, the, the first thing I think of is the time, the, the energy, the sacrifice that gets put in. You know, it's, it's, it's so much about it's so much about the sacrifice and, and the families that, that let you know, part of their family go away and go to the race weekends and work on the race cars and, and make them fast and you know, try and get the most out of it. And you know, really handle the highs and lows. It's, it's an emotional sport, it's, it's mentally taxing. You think about you know, just all that grit and determination that each one of the people that's invested into this thing uh, have to put in and you know, the gratification that we all get when, when we make it happen and, and finally get a hold of it. You know, winning the, winning the IndyCar Championship, it, it comes with uh, responsibility. You, you've got to be the champion, you know, for that, that year, and you've got to represent the sport. And, you know, I feel like there's, there's more emphasis on it this year. You know, having, having been an American champion now, we haven't had one for, for five seasons. We haven't had a bunch of them over the last, you know, 15 years. So, uh, for us, we, we take a lot of pride in, in the IndyCar Series that, you know, this is a, a mainly American championship, and, and we want to attract the best from around the world. But you know, having successful Americans, that's that's very important too. And, and when it happens, it's something to it's something to remember. It's something to show people. It's uh, it's it's something to tell people about. And over the last three four days, that's what we've had to do. You know, we've had to had to share our championship with with the world as best as we can. And it's a responsibility you can't take lightly. For me, I I don't know that I'll actually appreciate uh, or, or fully understand what we did this year until I, I get back home, until I you know, have some time to myself. Um, you know, the off season, when you get back to work for the next year, I think that's really when it'll sink in that, you know, what we did this year was great. You know, it was, it, it's not easy to do. There's, you, once you have to go back to work to try and do it again, you realize how much it took to make it happen. And I, I think that's the moment that's probably gonna hit me the most. Um, and, and I can't wait for that. It should hit you in that moment that, you know, we achieve something that you you set out from uh, an early age to do, and to to achieve that is a is a huge deal. To do it again, you know, that's that's what a racer wants to do. They want to try and do it as many times as possible. Racing is a different world. It's cruel, relentless, and never stands still. It's always going forward, brutal, and unforgiving. To get your foot in the door of this sport was never going to be easy. It would demand strength, sacrifice, and a determination from myself and others around me. I have received more friendship, help, and support than any person could ever ask for. The journey to becoming an IndyCar champion is tedious and time-consuming. It's not for the faint of heart or those unwilling to stomach the scrutiny along the way. The people in my life are the single greatest ingredient to my success. 
I can't repay the time, the effort, or the opportunities extended to me. What I can give is my heartfelt appreciation for all of those that stood by my side. Thank you, Mark Dismore, for sharing with me your love and passion for the sport in its truest form. Thank you, Jeremy Shaw, for giving me the opportunity to show the world exactly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Joe Tandy, thank you for giving me the chance to hone my craft in one of the world's most competitive race environments. Thank you, Sam Schmidt, for giving me the opportunity to come back to America and chase a dream. Sarah Fisher and Wink Hartman, thank you for putting me on the big stage. Thank you, Ed Carpenter, for your guidance, friendship, and direction in this difficult sport. Thank you, Roger Penske and Tim Sindrick, for the chance to work hard and represent your team. And thank you to my parents and family for their sacrifice, dedication, and unconditional love. You created the foundation of which I have built my career on and gave life to all the opportunities that were presented to me along the way. My thank you list could be 10 times longer and there are not enough words to express my gratitude. Racing is about people and without them, climbing the mountain of professional motorsports would be impossible. I can't say it enough. Thank you.